What up, though? I'm your boy, OG Tim Wilson. I am here live with the Nasty Boys on the show where we talk shop. We talk a little smack. And we talk fantasy football. It's the showdown. Yo, yo, what up, though? I'm your boy, OG Tim Wilson, and I'm here live with the Nasty Boys, Big Ed and Waze. What's going on, Big Ed? What up, what up, though? What up, though? What up, though, Waze? Man, what's good? What's good? What's good is what he wants to know. I'll tell you what's good, man. Uh, the show tonight is going to be good because there's a lot going on, man. It's a lot happened this past week. This has been the big week going down so uh without any further ado i'm gonna kick it off with the um the team battles sounds good right so uh ways first of all in the efg battle we've won already okay because that one is set up a little different where the winner is the team that wins the most games during the season okay and then the championship is just for bragging rights so we've already won that league. Of course, we can't get our money yet because we're still waiting for everybody to pay up. Um, but that said, for the bragging rights, Ways knocked off Carlton. Fuck Carlton to go into the finals against a Valentin who knocked off uh, um, Ricardo. So two BSB boys got knocked off in the semifinals in this league. Um, and uh, so now Valentin from the EFG, from the elite against Waze from the extreme fantasy games. So uh, big up to Waze. Yo, congratulations there, buddy. Man, Kick some ass. Bring it on home. Let us get both. Let us get the win and the bragging rights. How about that? How about that shit? In the big dogs eat. So the big dogs eat came down to, it's been a pretty even battle. That's the uh, nasty boys against BSB, which stands for Broad Street Barbies. I mean, Broad Street Bullies. My bad. My bad. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, and it came down, this has been an, a pretty tough fight, an even battle all year. And it was interesting that it came down to the final four being two nasty boys battling against each other and two BSBs battling against each other, two bullies going against each other. And the winners will hold out for the final. So there's definitely a nasty boy versus um, the BSB in the finals. And I knocked off Durio in the semifinals to go to the finals to take on uh, Big Randy. Big Randy knocked off uh, a bird gang. And so it's me against Big Randy in the finals for the big dogs eat. So it's up to me to take it home and make something of it. Get that loot, get that loot. World War, man, it started off lopsided. It started off in the World War One, which is what I'm calling it, assuming there's going to be a World War Two, because the World War One we didn't put no money on the table, so we got to fight again for the money, right? Right. Um, it was the Nasty Boys against Death Row, and it started off lopsided. We were smashing them dudes, man, but we get to the playoffs, and they, uh, we were pitted against each other and knocked each other out early until it was just Durio against the world and Durio got knocked off. So it's death row against death row. So they find they win automatically. They win. It's a de all death row championship. And uh, so big up to death row, man. Y'all, y'all did your thing. Your proof superiority over the nasty boys this year, but we'll be back. We'll be back. We put some cheese on the table and see what happens. We'll be back. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, uh, good year for the, that was a, that was a, I, I enjoyed that, that one there. Uh, good. That was a good group. 
Death Row did a good job. So let's see here. In the um, in in the uh, leaders of the new school, that is the Steppers only Dijon's group against Midwest Monsters, which is Chris's group. Uh, Dijon being my son, Chris being my rival son, uh, Johnny the Mechanic. Um, they dominated the semifinals, and it is now. Uh, Crisis versus Yosemite Yams in the finals. So it's an all Midwest Monsters final. Wow. All with Midwest Monsters. Steppers only got stomped on in that one. Uh, I just also want to point out that real quick, as a side note, in uh, the smoke session, league mm-hmm. it's come down to ways versus Johnny the mechanic I like that one I like that I had to bring that up 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 in the war zone which is steppers only versus BSB uh Let's see who won. Um, BSB, Carlton got knocked off again by O.A. Brown, who is for um, Steppers Only. And uh, J49ers knocked out Ricardo. So they both got knocked out of this one, just like the EFG round. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's J49ers against O.A. Brown, and that is BSB versus Steppers Only for all the marbles. So, yo, congratulations to those that went to the finals, and I wish luck to you. I do, I do, I do. Uh, (coughs) I'm sorry. In the, uh, let's see here. I also had to bring this one up, another side note, if you don't mind. If I might, if I might, another side note. In the uh, Speed Force, which is Waze's group, it is Big Ed against Waze. What up, though, in the finals? Waze yeah. knocked off Dijon, and, uh, and Big Ed knocked off Dinner Ranger. So it's Waze against Big Ed in the finals. Going for my second chip. Oh, going for I got, a I got three. I got three championship rounds this week. I, yeah, only the three so far this week. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this coming weekend. Okay, well, I think I got. I've got quite a few of. I got a few of them because uh, I think I'm in pop up draft. I'm in the Chinese corruption. I'm in the uh, big dogs eat. Yep. And. Uh, Nasty Football League. Mm-hmm. The nasty Football 2, that is. And I got my first chip last week. This past week. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. In one of Carlton's league. Okay. Okay. Good, good. Cool, cool in the game. Congratulations. Big Ed got him a chip. And, um... <clears throat> In the clash, there was odds stacked against us, and it was not looking good. It was looking bleak. Uh, Mr. Perfect had a big lead over Dijon, Dijon being the last of the Mohicans, the last standing run. Um, and uh, the, first of all, Johnny the Mechanic was playing against Will. Willie White is the one that put me out, the Dirty Dogs. Willie White and, and myself played the last game of the season winner goes to the playoffs loser doesn't go and he came back and beat me uh well i almost came back on him actually and uh he, he held me off held off my comeback and now here he is knocked off johnny the mechanic to go into the finals versus big step of dune aka Dijon. 
Yo, Dijon is holding it down for the EFG Collective one time. So the, it's uh, EFG against uh, SWG for the finals for all the marbles. Uh, it's a good game, Dijon, for stepping up and, and hanging in there. He had made a great comeback. It looked it looked over. It really did. It looked like it was over. Then Monday, he just he just went on a tear, man. That damn Dijon just went on a tear. So good for him. Congratulations, D. I heard he's won like nine games straight. Yeah, he went on a tear, man. He went on a tear and just, just uh, stormed back, and now he's in the finals, and he takes on the guy that knocked me out the playoffs. Mm. So uh, you got two reasons to kick his ass, D. Kick his ass, D. Go ahead. And uh, that's it for the leagues, man. There's more stuff to say, but we're going to hold off. Uh, you know, we can, we can talk about a few more because because we just down to one game. We ain't talking about all the games. But when we get to some chip counts, we'll get to some chip counts next week. Uh, there should be some There should be some, some finals. There will be some finals. And remember, bro, oh, bro, Speed Force is two weeks for the yep. last, uh, final round as well. So we got it. Week 18 is our last week uh, with Speed Force. Yep. Or that's both of y'all against each other. You know what? Next week, we are also going to talk about a league that we didn't talk about all year for the most part. But we did a What Up Do Show League, mm-hmm. Best Ball League, where we just randomly picked teams. I mean, we literally just went round robin making picks. So all these teams are generically made up of uh players that we all picked and i have not looked at this league i looked at it once and saw big ed trying to cheat <laughs> that's because i forgot it was best ball and uh other than that i never i have not looked at this league so i don't know what to expect most of the teams are named like team 10 team six uh, there's only four named teams because in order for us to do the draft, we had to join the league. So there's each one of us, and Dijon grabbed a team too. So uh, there's four named teams. The rest of them are just team one, team two, team three. And um, I'm curious to see how it plays out, man, because it was, it was, it was fun. It was interesting. And um, the draft was a lot of fun. The draft was more fun than the season. We just let the season play out, and we'll see what happens. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Mm. Ways, what's next? On this, what's next on the agenda? I got a touchy, touchy subject for you here, OG. Oh, shit. But it's an honest question based off what we've seen this past weekend. Okay. Um, how do you think Brock Purdy's performance this past week affected his MVP? Oh, he's um, done. See. He's done. He's out. He's out of the conversation. Right now, it's Lamar. I think it's Lamar's to lose now. It was per- it was Brock's to lose, and he lost it. I don't know. I'm. I'm- I think Lamar's got a stiff competition with CMC. I, I think, think he does Christian too. McCaffrey, to me, Christian McCaffrey is the clear number one. Uh, he's been that way for weeks for me. I, I think I think Christian McCaffrey is. Um, I think Lamar is the clear number one. Based off what, what I saw after, last week, after after what I just saw last night, I mean, I I, I think Lamar is is number one, and and CMC is I think number two. I think he is number two. Tyreek number three. I don't know. I think Tyreek lost lost some lost some ground when he when he missed that game. Yeah. yeah. He lost a lot of headway. Yeah, he missed he lost some ground. I think the Ravens defense needs to be uh talked about on that. <laughs> Man, I've been telling everybody they got the scariest defense in the league right now and they proved that. The Ravens have proved to be the best team in football. Yeah. And you know what I can say to the locals here? This should make you feel good for two reasons. A, because 
it puts the Lions in the tie for the one seed. Yeah. And B, because now you ain't got to feel bad about the, the, the Ravens uh, beating the brakes off your ass because now you see they just that fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> now you see that they are just that freaking good. Man. They are next level. They are next. I remember saying, you know, and it, it, it dawned on me while I, as I was watching that fucking debacle last night um, through the tears. <laughs> <laughs> through the tears, I had this thought that hit me. I remember speaking on this a while back. A few weeks back, maybe y'all remember, maybe y'all don't. If not, I, I can pull the tapes. I remember saying, I think the AFC is proving to be better than the NFC. Oh, God, yeah. It and is. I remember right saying that a while back, and it's like, and then when Frisco ran through Philly and, you know, they started running through everybody, and it, it just bumped them up and everybody was the consensus. They're the best team in football. And we forgot that, but the AFC is better. So maybe the best team in football is coming out there at other conference. And then they insulted them and made them underdogs, heavy underdogs at home. Well, they was oh no, they were on the road. They made Baltimore was heavy underdogs and they still felt like, I don't care. We're on the road. Well, we shouldn't be heavy underdogs. We, we got the right. same damn record. Right. Yeah. And uh, one thing I can say for good for, for Frisco is that I don't think Baltimore gave anyone the blueprint on how to beat the 49ers. No. Because no. you have to be as good as Baltimore to do what they did. Yeah. Right. I have to agree with that. At, uh, completely. You try to do that shit if you want to. Yeah. It's not going to work. It ain't going to work for you. <laughs> yeah, that this is, ain't the blueprint. We're just that damn good. Yeah, exactly. So hopefully, if this turns out to be a, a, a Super Bowl preview, hopefully the rematch will be more competitive. Uh, but Frisco had no answers, man, and no. Baltimore had an answer for everything. Man, and what was up with Debo dropping balls last night? Man, they, they, they was, they were. They had their number, man. They had their freaking number, dude. They yeah. was hitting the motherfuckers with bricks. <laughs> I will say, Brandon Ayuk was going off that second half. Brandon Ayuk went off the second half. Sam Darnold actually played pretty well. Yeah, he did. Yeah, but is he on anyone's roster, let alone starting? Nah. nah, nah. <laughs> no one expected that. Nah. And I don't think anyone's going to even pick him up because everybody knows CMC, Brock Purdy's going to be back next game. Yeah. CMC was good. CMC still got him dropped uh, over 100 yards. Yeah. Through, through all of the smoke, you look at his numbers, he still put him up. He still did his thing. Um, so he, he still kept his name in the running. Purdy was pathetic. Yeah. All I could think was, damn, I wish we had an efficient quarterback. <laughs> Me though, here's the thing. It's I, I asked really Joe last thing. night. I was I was I was wondering, I, does OG still think Brock Purdy's efficient? <laughs> yeah, you I I do. I think that I, I'm crediting Baltimore's defense. I am not discrediting uh Brock Purdy. Uh um, well, didn't they lose Trent Williams during the first quarter as well? They did, yeah. That really affects. Once the you Trent lose Trent Purdy. Williams, you lose Brock Purdy. Yeah, exactly. Without Trent Williams, Brock Purdy is almost becomes useless. The, ru the, the rush is because they can get to him. Yeah. If you can get to him, you can get you got him. He ain't got to worry about that blind side when uh, Williams is out there. But the yeah. moment he goes out, man, that's tough because now he has to he has to check two lanes. Yep. He knows back. He doesn't know his back's not covered or not. Yep, yep. You're right. But yeah, I, I um, I'm unlike unlike my counterpart, I can't judge a man <laughs> off of four <laughs> games when he's played 14. So I'll go by the other 10 
uh, and say he's still he's still in, he's still playing efficiently overall uh, because out of 14 games he's only lost four. In fact, you can go over his whole career. Mm-hmm. You can add you can add to that. These are these are his only four losses. But damn, when he lose, he lose, he lose it. Man, yeah, this was a this was this was bad though. That was I mean it was just bad bad. I think there's only one team that can beat the, the Baltimore Ravens. Who's that? Who's that? Cleveland Browns. Oh man, yeah. And that's a there's a good strong possibility that could be the AFC Championship game right there. They coming. They coming. Yeah. They are coming. Yeah, Joe Flacco balling. Bro, man. I didn't realize they was ten and four until today. They ain't lost. They ain't lost a lot of games. Nope. Flacco is came off the couch. With a vengeance, yeah, he he pulled a Kurt Warner. He came off the couch with a vengeance, bro. Yeah, I can agree with that. I also i i I want to give a lot of credit to the coach as well, because he's also got one a couple of those wins with Dorian uh, Thompson. He yeah. uh, then PJ Walker get one of those. No, they just signed PJ Walker uh, because Dorian Thompson's gone. PJ played. Yeah, PJ yeah. played. Yeah, and they did all this. They're working on, what, their fourth quarterback right now, and they're still pulling these wins off. And it's not like it's a lucky win. They're they're balling. They're playing their asses off. His hat is, his, his name is in the in the hat for coach of the year now. Yeah, I get that. Absolutely. His name is yeah. in the hat. His name has been thrown into the hat. But I tell you who's balling. Flacco is bringing out the best in Amari Cooper mm-hmm. and David Njoku. Ooh, mm-hmm. I have, those two have been putting up numbers like bananas. I mean, Amari just broke the Cleveland record, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah. broke a, a single game of receiving record. Yeah, they they uh, Cleveland is scary, man. Cleveland, I, I don't want Cleveland to go to the Super Bowl before Detroit. That's not a Lions fan thing. That's a Detroit <laughs> versus Cleveland thing. I don't right. want it to happen. Cleveland, there's four teams that has not been to the Super Bowl. Right? You mm-hmm. got Jacksonville, Houston, Cleveland, Detroit. Mm-hmm. Who gives a fuck about Jacksonville? I'm sorry. Who gives a damn about Jacksonville? <laughs> yeah. Cleveland and Houston, I do not want to see either one of them go to the Super Bowl before Detroit. Yeah. It's a city versus city thing. I've lived in Cleveland. I've lived I've lived in three of the four cities that's never made it to the Super Bowl. How would you feel if it ended up being Cleveland versus Detroit in the Super Bowl, though? That would be phenomenal. <laughs> well, especially since it's been... Talk about a border battle. <laughs> it's been 70 years since the last time the Browns and the Lions had over 10 wins in a season. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And coincidentally, the last time that happened, they faced off with each, uh, each other around this time of the year, and they were both 11 and 4. That would be amazing, actually. Yeah. I would be – that would be the only – that the only thing that would not make me disappointed in the, in the 49ers not going to the Super Bowl would be Detroit going to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I would be the only, that would be the only thing that I, I just, if they, if it happens, I want 49ers to lose to somebody else. I don't want Detroit to go at the expense of the 49ers. Right. <laughs> That's what I don't want to have happen. That game's a conflict of interest for you then. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, and, and and my heart is in, in Frisco. Ain't no doubt about it. My, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big 49er fan. If they when they play each other, I root 49ers. But for the Super Bowl, oh my gosh, the stakes that. are different because they're representing my city, and they've never been. We got rings, mm-hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? We got gold balls uh, up and down the halls. Dang, but to see Detroit make it to the Super Bowl before Cleveland and before Houston is worth it for me. Right. Yeah. So you, you're right. It would be a conflict. Um, but at this base, if 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 Detroit can run off these last two wins, do they get the one seed? 
and get the bye week, and then know, Frisco, dude. and then Frisco has to fuck around and face Stafford. Ooh, Minnesota and Chicago are both still in the hunt. Hey, wait, the Ch- Chicago doesn't play Detroit again, do, do they? No, they play okay. Dallas, and Minnesota. No, our, our playoff hopes were done when we lost against. Uh, yeah, you're right, Cleveland. I thought they, for some reason, I thought they were still in the hunt. Uh, no, we we had to win against. We had from that Cleveland game, we had to win out. Oh, we, yeah. And then we also had to have help from everybody else too. So yeah. Well, Minnesota, either so, way. I guess my good. question is: if the 49ers and the Lions end up in a tie at the end of it, who gets the one seed? Whoever had the tougher schedule. Oh, that don't make sense because they didn't play each other. So that so, don't make sense. It's not whoever had the tougher schedule. It's got to be something else. That doesn't make like sense. Points based. Or whoever had more conference wins. It could be conference wins, division wins, conference wins, something like that. Yeah. Division record, conference record. I, that sounds more like something that would be uh, a tiebreaker. Mm. And they're going to be tougher schedules. This ain't college. They don't do strength of schedule in the pros. That's true. Man, it is. This playoff picture is look. It's interesting in the first place because it is. If both of them are the usual table, suspects for either uh, conference. If those two now now, uh, um, Frisco still got to play the Rams, right? I believe so. They play yeah. Washington and then Los Angeles. Yeah, and Matt Stafford. I want to let me say this. I'm going back again. I recall having this conversation about Matt Stafford. A Hall of Famer. And at the time, my stance was, I still think he needs to do more. Mm-hmm. I think he's on the cusp, but he needs more. He His resume is not complete. Yeah. Right. And at this point, I'm starting to feel like what Big Ed felt then is that maybe he's not a first, he's not a first ballot, but he he's a Hall of Famer. I think he gets in now. Yeah. At this point, there's three receivers that had record breaking seasons on his watch. Yeah. yeah. And we have to give him credit for that. If it uh, for, for it to be three different receivers to have record breaking seasons on his watch, you've got to you've you've got to pay that attention. Got to pay attention to it. The common denominator between Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup. And and Megatron having record breaking seasons. And wasn't Megatron a rookie uh with his No, Mega Mega wasn't a rookie, but he still he had the most receiving yards in the season. Doing on yeah. with, with staff. Puka was rookie. Puka yeah. got the rookie record and then Cooper Cup did the triple crown. Yeah. So yeah, those the with those three those three feats happening on his watch with him at the helm. I think is enough to say. You add, now you can add the ring and say, "Yeah, put him on, put him in there." You can't. Didn't Megatron t- now get in? you can't tell the story without him. You Didn't can't. Megatron tell- get into the hall. Oh, Meg's in. Yeah. Yeah, Meg's in. Yeah, Meg's in. But you and can. The only still- way he gets in, the only way he gets in is with Matt Stafford. Yeah, but but you could still tell the story. Of the NFL during his era, without, without a whole lot, with Stafford wasn't really talked about because he had nothing. He had no playoff wins. Yeah, yeah exactly. You could and, not. You could still tell the story without him. Now you can't tell the story without. Now you say it wasn't just Megatron, right? You know and, what I'm saying? Because then you could say, no, Megatron, Megatron was was a freak of nature, mm-hmm. and so yeah, all Stafford had to do was throw the ball up. Big deal. It, it's easier when because with Megatron you can say something you can't do with Mega uh, with Matt Stafford. You can go and say something like Megatron had a spectacular career, but imagine what it would have been if he had Ben Roethlisberger, right? Or Tom Brady, or Tom Brady for that. Yeah. Whereas yeah. So you can't or, have that or, same discussion or, or Peyton Manning, exactly. But you can't yeah. have that same discussion with Matt Stafford, right? Right. But now you you now you you add two more receivers to his resume, 
who's had record-breaking seasons under him. Now he get now you can't tell the story without it. Exactly. Right. Now you can't tell the story of his era without mentioning Matt Stafford because he's the common denominator with all three of those. So I, I think now he gets in. And now he's in. I, I believe he's in now. So congratulations, Stafford. I just put you in. <laughs> I got three injury uh, news for you guys. One is something that we're all more aware of. TJ Hawkinson, done for the season. With a Another one bites the dust. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Trevor Lawrence, currently listed as questionable with a right shoulder uh, sprain. Another one bites the dust. So, uh, championship this week. If you got Trevor Lawrence, you need to keep an eye on that because that's his throwing arm. Yep. Uh, another championship week downfall. Jalen Waddle is questionable with a high ankle sprain. And another one gone. And another one gone. Another one bites the dust. Yeah. These, those are the three main ones I could see. Uh, I haven't seen any other major injuries other than those three for this week. So, uh, I, well, I can I can throw a couple of questions out because. Of, a couple of them was uh, came up last week, and oh my goodness, did I save my own ass at the last minute? Oh boy, let when I tell you, I, when I tell you, I saved my own ass at the last minute, and the uh, big dogs eat. Mm-hmm. Josh Jacobs, oh, I did not that. play. He was acute all week. He was questionable all week long. And I found out like before kickoff that he was out. And I Ooh, had skin of your teeth. Ooh wee. Yeah, I wasn't as lucky. <laughs> yeah, I found out with about ten minutes left and I got him out of there. And then I got him out of there and stuck Gus Edwards in there and that asshole scored a touchdown. Yeah, I noticed the Ravens been using Gus Edwards a lot in the red zone. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yep, yep. He scored a touchdown. He was a, you know, he's a hole because of course he scored a touchdown against. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I I feel for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. Uh, no, I don't know if we mentioned it or not, but the Lions kicked Minnesota's ass. Man, <laughs> man, look. If it do it again in two weeks. <laughs> I look. Here's the thing. Right now, we don't have a quarterback, so I get it. Nick Mullins. I, my personal opinion on this whole matter is. We're yeah, we're in the hunt. We got Nick Bowens. He gets a little fired up, but the kids are screw up. I'm ready to move on to Jaron Hall. Give the rookie an opportunity to get us into the playoffs. <laughs> you know, I thought Nick Mullins didn't play bad at all. You, you know who Nick Mullins' mentor was? <laughs> Who's that? Brett Favre. And look, I didn't think he who played bad. He just he just threw the last pick. In the end, he threw, and he, but he got him all the way downfield for all I got to do is throw it in, got him in, in, in range where he could throw it into the end zone and score for the win. Unfortunately, he's my thing he's is one that got picked. I, you guys know, I, I look at football from a coach's perspective, and that man's an idiot. He's an absolute idiot when it comes to protecting the ball. He called him an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I did. And I tried to hurry up and cover it up because I realized I made that mistake. <laughs> he was the Lions Man. defensive MB- MVP. Yeah. Like, Nick Mullins is a moron when it comes to the Lions. Ball. He was the Lions. <laughs> he got the Lions game ball. Man. Man. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I like, I like an old boy when old boy got the interception and he threw his arms up when he still was running. <laughs> I was like, no, you better protect the ball. What are you doing? Look, 
if we're going to have a quarterback like Nick Mullins out there, we might as well start the rookie and give him a shot and make those screw-ups. That's all I'm saying. If we're going to have rookie mistakes, let's at least make sure it's a rookie making making. Them. <laughs> Man, I tell you what. Lions fans, beware. I do not want Matt Stafford to come up in Ford Field Ooh. and kick y'all ass. Oh, my goodness. If Matt Stafford comes up in Ford Field and kick y'all ass, <laughs> I will never hear I would. I would not listen to talk radio for the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. I don't want to hear it. I don't even want to hear it. They gonna be crying up. They gonna cry me a river, boy. Because it's been a it's been a discussion as to you know that would wouldn't that be the best story if Matt Stafford came in and we beat Matt Stafford? Yeah, but don't y'all think? Don't y'all think that uh, y'all realize that the other story would be just as big if he came back to Ford Field and kicked your ass? Hmm. Ooh. That might actually be the bigger story. That would be the bigger story, actually. Because <laughs> now he didn't want a Super Bowl first, and then he came back a couple of years later and kicked your ass. He came in, he came in emphatically said, I'm better than this. <laughs> hey, uh, he better not. <laughs> he better not do it. Boy, I tell you, you think what. he makes it out of town if that happens? He ain't getting no. He ain't getting nowhere near the airport. <laughs> they they taking that man out of the field on helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he better not bring his wife because she really ain't gonna make it out. They all, <laughs> at least they like Matt. They don't like his wife. They, they don't like her anyway. So, what's her name? Kelly. Kelly better watch her ass. She ever come to the D. She might not come. She knows. She know they don't like her. Big Ed, you got our heavy hitters. Hands. She gonna get yes, hands. Hands. <laughs> What you got for us, Big? <laughs> uh, heavy hitters this week. Quarterbacks. We got Josh Allen, Derek Carr, and the aforementioned Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco is the man. I just want to say, man, I want to thank y'all for this. It's been ther- therapeutic. I've been, I've been. In a bad way all day, man. I'm feeling a little better because of this show. Well, I'm glad we could help you out. Oh yeah. Uh, for running backs, we got Brees Hall, Christian McCaffrey, and Jameer Gibbs. Mm. Jameer Gibbs had man, he had a hell of a game, but are we really surprised? Not anymore. And, and I'm not speaking about like against the Vikings type situations, just Kids been balling out this season, right? David Montgomery didn't have too bad a game either. No, that's because y'all too blitz happy. You can run against blitz. Uh, Interesting how it played out. Yeah, leading up to the Tampa Bay game, David Montgomery was the star running back and was proven to be the star running back, and everybody was saying Jameer Gibbs is it's just not strong. He he too weak. Blah blah blah. And then at the Tampa Bay game, David Montgomery got hurt. And Jameer Gibbs was suddenly the following week thrust into that starting position. And he's been the man ever since. Yep. Uh, Wide receivers. Amari Cooper, George Pickens, and Puka Nakua. George Pickens with the, I decided to finally show up for work game. (laughs) <laughs> what in the world happened oh my god he went off how about that god Lee, he went off I was where in- did that shit come from part of it was Mason Rudolph balled out that, uh, that day part, too part of it was Mason Rudolph and part of it was him taking all that criticism from the week before yeah when he admitted that he uh didn't block for his running back because he was scared to get hurt. <laughs> he said, I had to make a business decision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah uh, tight said, ends. You know he caught some hell in a locker room over there. Oh, yeah. So oh, he, yeah. Had to, he had to show out. Uh, for tight ends, we got George Kittle, mm-hmm. Chicosium Oconoquo, mm-hmm. and Evan Ingram. 
A kind of quote caught a, a a touchdown pass from Derrick Henry. Yep. This yeah. Week. Do, do do you either of you have Derrick Henry on fan, in fantasy? I yeah. Do. Yeah. How'd that play out for you guys with him with a passing touchdown? To be honest, I don't know. <laughs> I, I've always been curious, and I haven't had a running back ever do it. So I'm oh, like, I, I wonder how, I that, how that works out. Well, you get a touchdown. I mean, it's, it's just like a quarterback touchdown. You get a passing touchdown. Well, he's going to be 21 points and, and let the big dogs eat. Okay. Man. Yeah, no. He, he that, that, uh, Chig actually had a good game. I think it's his second this year. Making the – at least making – Yeah, no shit. Year. He kept showing up on my draft board, man, and, I, and and all year long he'd been a disappointment. Yeah, big disappointment. Yeah, he shows up every other every few games. Now here he is on the heavy hitter list. Man, a little too late in the season for it. <laughs> Somebody ought to kick him in the ball. Of uh, kickers, speaking. Of kickers. <laughs> That's it for the heavy hitters. All right, that means it's time for some stardom and sit em. Stardom and sit It's a whole lot of money in this motherfucker. All right, so with quarterbacks, I've got, uh, I actually got, I feel like my starter is, is wild. I think I've got two wild cards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with Russell Wilson Ooh. this week. Ooh. Uh, my wild card, y'all sitting down for this one? Mm-hmm. Derek Carr. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yes, Tampa. And my sit him. Yeah, that's a good. One. I like it. Y'all gonna want to? Y'all sitting down for my sit him? I believe I am. Joe Flacco. Ooh. Good wild card. Been talking about him all day, but I say sit him down this week. Because everybody talking about him now. Yeah. Big game. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with Josh Allen against New England. And Jordan Love against Minnesota for my wild card. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. That Minnesota defense ain't no joke, so I can definitely agree with that as a wild card. Oh, the, uh, Jared Goff thinks it's a joke. <laughs> the Lions defense thinks it's a joke. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, the offense thinks it's a joke. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Fierce fans, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what my eyes told me on, during the game on Sunday. Uh, who's your sit man? Come on. Uh, Dak Prescott against Detroit. Ooh. That is an interesting sit I don't like Dak Prescott. I agree with uh, my boy uh, Cam Newton is saying he's a great game manager. So it would be interesting to see if he can manage a game against the Lions. Uh, I'm going to start Josh Allen as well against those Patriots. My wild card this week is going to be Matt Stafford against the Giants. And my sit is going to be Nick Mullins against the Packers because they better start Jared Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Running backs. I got, um... Austin Eckler. My wild card, I'm going with Khalil Herbert. Okay. Like and for my sit him, Flacco's teammate Jerome Ford. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. The kid's been impressive this season, but uh, not the last couple weeks. No. Uh, my stardom is going to be Kyron Williams against the Giants. Uh, Travis, e- Travis Etienne against Carolina 
from a wild card. And my sit is going to be James Conner against Philadelphia. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start Christian McCaffrey against the Commanders. I'm going to start as my wild card, Ty Chandler against the Packers. And my uh, sit is going to be Antonio Gibson against the 49ers. Okay. Wide receivers, I'm going to go with Nico Collins. And then my wild card, I'm going with Demarcus Robinson for the Rams. And then my sit is going to be Chris Godwin. Okay. Talk about this. Uh, my stardom is going to be Chris Olave against Tampa Bay. My wild card is going to be Michael Pittman against Las Vegas. And my sit em. Who? DeAndre Hopkins against Houston. Woo! Yeah, without Will Levis, he's trash. Yeah, he hasn't been doing nothing. He scored me four points in one league this week. Yeah, yeah, but Will Levis didn't play. That's why. <laughs> Serious. Will Levis has a big arm and get it to him. When Will Levis not playing, Tannehill can't get it to him. No. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I'm going to start Stefan Diggs against the Patriots. Uh, wild card is going to be Rasheed Rice against the Bengals. And my sit is going to be Kelvin Ridley against the Panthers. Rasheed Rice is the only thing catching balls from Patrick Mahomes these days. Yeah. <laughs> Rasheed Rice did his job and helped me uh, beat Carlton this week. So, tight ends. Tight ends, I got Dalton Schultz. Mm -hmm. My wild card, I probably should have put Dalton Schultz as my wild card because I like this guy so much. My wild card is Isaiah Likely. Mm-hmm. Did you see that run Isaiah likely did when he ran after the catch and he stiffed arm old boy and bow muffed him? <laughs> oh man, I was I was crying me a river. I was like, no. Uh, I sit him as Tyler Conklin. Ooh. Okay, I can get with that. Uh, I'm gonna start Evan Ingram against Carolina. My wild card is going to be Trey McBride against Philadelphia. And I'm sitting Kyle Pitts against Chicago. Okay. Um, I'm going to start George Kittle against the Commanders. My wild card is going to be Logan Thomas against the 49ers. And my sit -em is going to be Kyle Pitts against the Bears. And that's the end of stardom sit -ems. That leaves the us. end of the start of sit -em. That leaves us to make our picks for our five games this week. Oh, boy. All right, who we got, Wade? All right, so first up, we got Detroit going off up against Dallas. Oh, that's going to be a good matchup, man. And they are in Dallas. Um, I think Detroit just got too much to play for. I'm going with the Lions. I'm going to go with the Lions also. Dallas has had a problem with winning teams lately. And that is the exact reason why I want to go with Dallas, no matter how much I don't like them, because they are in the same boat as far as this playoff race goes when it comes to, De to Detroit. So I'm going to go with Dallas as well, or not as well, by myself. <laughs> okay. Next game. We got Miami at Baltimore. Oh, I'm going with Baltimore. I'm going with Baltimore. As am I. As am I. What the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> we got Atlanta at Chicago. I'm going Chi-Town. I'm going with Chicago. 
I will go with the Bears as well. They've been playing some damn good ball lately. I yeah. went the last time all three of us picked the Bears to win. I don't think <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> uh, it's been a half week. <laughs> oh, has it? Yeah, last week we all went with the Bears. Oh, okay. Uh, San Fran up against going to Washington. San Fran, they're going to bounce back. San Fran is going to beat the living dog shit out of Washington. <laughs> Wait. I'm going with San Fran. Okay. Uh, final game this week, Monday Night Football, Green Bay at Minnesota. I'm going to go Packers. I already knew that. I'm going to go with the Packers, too. And just for the hell of it, I'm going to go with the Vikings. And <laughs> more specifically, just for the hell of it, my ass. That's I'm a hard going pain. for Darren Hall to throw for at least 50 yards. That's if Who, Darren Hall even plays. He will. <laughs> at, if he he may not start, but at least by the end of the first quarter, he will. <laughs> I think me and Big Ed picked all the same games this week. We uh, might have. Yeah, you have. But those are head picks. They ain't heart picks. You, anytime you pick the Bears, let's be real, it's a heart pick. <laughs> no. It's just Atlanta ain't got a good team. No, they don't. That's why I picked them as well. Or picked the Bears as well. And I saw the most ridiculous thing ever. Somebody proposed a trade where we trade Justin Fields in the first round pick for some reason for fucking Kyle Pitts. She <laughs> kills my language. How would you do that? I don't even know. <laughs> I would have, I would have, Somebody from I would, Atlanta had to write that article. <laughs> I would say Justin Fields and, and a future first round pick for Isaiah Pacheco. No. <laughs> I'll take B. John Robinson. <laughs> I'll take B. John. Yeah, no. Nah. But I'm not taking Kyle Pitts. No, because his play is the pits. And Cole Komet has been balling, so. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, man, Ways, where we have been a heavy hitter. Uh, we're done. That was it for us. Oh, uh, yeah, we out of here, man. I'm sorry I didn't mean to cut you off, Big Ed, but I'm trying to survive it. I'm oh, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. I'm trying to survive it, but yo, we want to thank y'all for joining. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the channel. If you like what you see, hit the like button and like what you see. We want all of that. We need all of that smoke. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, the What Up Those Show Radio Network. Subscribe to the channel because we need all of that smoke. And you can see all of our shows that way. It's not just this show. We have other shows that we do on the network that we think you will enjoy. On behalf of the Nasty Boys, I'm your boy, OG Tim Wilson. This has been The Showdown. See you next time. Peace.